From the Lone Star State where the tradition of bass fishing runs deep, we proudly present Fishing Texas. Featuring professional bass fisherman and three-time FLW Angler of the Year, Clark Wendland. Welcome to Fishing Texas from Big Sam Rayburn, located in the piney woods of the eastern part of the state. This week, Clark is turning over the reins to elite bass pro Mike McClellan. We're gonna preview stop number one in the Texas Team Trail, a brand new tournament series kicking off right here on March 10th. Now we'll look at the rest of the stops later in the show, but for right now, let's kick it off at Sam Rayburn Reservoir. At normal pool, Sam Rayburn takes up more than 114,000 acres, but a long Texas drought has brought water levels down and the lake is currently about 11 feet low. Oh, there's a fish right there. I was just getting ready to say, I mean, there's two things I'm gonna look at at Rayburn and that's uh, either fishing these points like I just caught this fish on or the drains. I know I've talked a lot about the drains, but I mean, really these points are probably the second thing that I would really, really look at if I was coming to Rayburn. I mean, if these fish are in a pre-spawn mode, there's no doubt they're gonna be on these points. If they're really starting to get to that spawning point, that's when they're gonna start filtering up through these drains and, and really start to, getting up there where you you want to catch them but uh tell you what that wouldn't be much of a tournament fish but there's nothing like catching them on a on a stick bait and you know this would be another bait that might actually play this is probably more of a, a pre-spawn a, a winter pattern but if the lake does stay cold and uh, these fish stage up on these points you can catch some big ones on a stick bait too it's a healthy little fish isn't it dang Like I said though, if you take a look at this, I mean, this is just an ideal situation. You've got drains that come in on both sides of this point. You've got some isolated brush piles, some uh, isolated standing timber, and that's the key to catching them when you come to Rayburn in the spring. Man, it's crazy. I was here probably 15 years ago and this lake was about seven or eight foot low. And to see it this low, I mean, it's like 13 or 14 foot low right now. I mean, it's just unbelievable. You know, this stuff here that uh, is all out of the water was, you know, just under the water. So, you know, you were following these old drains that uh, swing up by these old sand flats and stuff. And I mean, that's essentially what these fish do is, I mean, they just get in these drains and they move in and out through the course of the year. And, you know, the whole key to Rayburn is the, the grass. I mean, anytime you get around, uh, well, I say anytime you get around grass, it's hard not to get around grass on Rayburn today. And I mean, these fish just follow these drains in and out. And uh, you mix some high drill in with a good drain and uh, some good creek channel turns, and uh, you're going to run into bass like that one we caught a while ago. Come on, baby. much of one, but that is another Sam Rayburn bass. I tell you what, I mean, this is a perfect example of some of the things I've talked about. Uh, it's just simply the fact where these fish are gonna be. I mean, as you can see right here, we're back in a drain. Uh, well, really, you could call this a creek channel. I mean, that's one thing about it. When you talk about drains, you're kind of talking about the little drains that come into, into the, to the lake. But right here, we're more in uh, what I would consider a creek channel. This is Little Caney Creek, and you've actually got the creek channel that runs right down the face of this bank. And I mean, basically, all I'm doing is uh, catching fish that are more than likely, these fish have been out deep, it's cooled off, they've come back shallow, and now as it's getting even colder, these fish are starting to migrate back out these creek channels. And that's the same kind of stuff that's gonna be going on when these guys show up here in March for the Texas Team Trail Tournament. I'm gonna tell you right now, this little spot right here is probably as good an explanation about the things that I've talked about today and what's gonna take place this spring. I mean, the way this lays out, I mean, you've got this drain that swings right in here tied and you can see how much sharper the, the, the bank falls off. I mean, the, the drain swings right up against this. So this is where the fish are gonna travel up. You've got a pea gravel point right here that offers perfect spawning areas. And if the lake comes up, like we had talked about it doing, you know, all you need is about eight or 10 foot of water, and this thing's gonna be pushing up into those willow trees. Then you get a couple more feet of water, then it's gonna push up into the pine trees like I was talking about earlier. So of any place that we've looked at on the lake today, 
This breaks it down probably as good as anything we've seen as far as what I've talked about. The travel routes, the spawning areas, the places you might potentially flip fish. I mean, this is what it's all about on Sam Rayburn. This is it. Hey, come check us out on Facebook. Send us your pictures and your questions. We want to know what you're doing out on the water. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Triton Boats builds equipment that professional anglers and serious amateurs look for in tournament bass boats. Their attention to detail in the factory means that once on the water, anglers can focus on the fish. So if you're looking for a tournament level boat that offers an advanced blend of fishability and performance, stop by your local Triton dealer or visit them online at tritonboats.com. We'll be right back with more from Fishing Texas. Before you head out here, get ready at Cabela's. Your source for the hottest new gear at tough to beat prices. Save big on everything you need when you shop by catalog, stores, and online at cabelas.com. Our legendary selection is field tested and field proven. You can trust our gear. Cabela's, world's foremost outfitter. There's a look, feel, and legacy with no equal. Packed with features, it's your license to lead. Experience the legendary performance of the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Combined with Evinrude E-Tech's best-in-class high-torque performance, these rigs are driven. The Ranger Z500 and 100 series, one goal, one standard, one passion, perfection. Evinrude E-Tech, spend more time on the water. If you want to activate the bass, you better have a HydroWave. You've got six different bait fish sounds, you run it at any volume, you can see them actually come up to the speaker of the HydroWave. You can watch them come up off the bottom. When you're fishing deep, the hardest one to catch is always the first one. With the HydroWave, you get them going faster. HydroWave, I won't fish without it. Repower now with a new Evinrood E-Tech, and you can save up to $1,600 per year in operating costs. Compared to your old outboard, a new Evinrude E-Tech uses up to 44% less fuel and 50% less oil. And it's up to 50% quieter. Evinrude E-Tech is the only outboard that requires no dealer scheduled maintenance for three years. It requires no break-in period and no oil changes ever. Evinrude E-Tech. Coming in 2012, the Texas Team Trail, a brand new tournament series for weekend anglers. The best venues, the best payout, period. Plus more contingency prize options than you can shake a stick at. Visit TexasTeamTrail.com for all the details and don't miss out on the new standard in tournament bass fishing, the Texas Team Trail. Welcome back to uh, Fishing Texas with Clark Wendland. This portion of the show is brought to you by Cabela's, the world's foremost outfitter of hunting, fishing, and outdoor gear. Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. And by the Texas Team Trail, an all-new tournament series. Welcome back to Sam Rayburn with Elite Bass Pro Mike McClelland. Uh, we're previewing stop number one of the 2012 Texas Team Trail. The Sam Rayburn is one of the legendary bass lakes in the whole country. The reason is, it's just the versatility of it, the variety that you can find there. Grass, uh, there's a little bit of rock, there's deep structure, you can fish shallow, bushes, the water can come up, fluctuates a lot, lots of timber, uh, you can run to the backs of the creeks, I mean it's got everything. For years, the lake has been an annual stop on the professional tour. Rayburn now hosts an estimated 300 tournaments a year, and the lake just keeps getting better. Sam Rayburn Reservoir is, I mean, it's a legendary. It's got to be one of the top 10 best ever bass fishing tournament lakes that's ever been designed. There's so many different ways that you can catch them, and it's constantly changing. And to me, that's what makes it a, a fair test for fishing because you can catch them one year and the next year go back and it'd be dry or 10 feet deeper. So Sam Rayburn is without question one of the fairest tests you're ever gonna find in competitive bass fishing. 
Now, as we said, the lake is currently about 11 feet low. This tends to scare some people, but in reality, it only serves to concentrate the fish. And with this in mind, let's send it back to Mike McClelland and see what lures he thinks will be key to catching pre-spawn fish in early March. Based on what I've seen here at Sam Rayburn today, if I was coming to fish this Texas Team Trail Tournament in March, this would probably be a pretty good array of the rods I would have ready to fish when I got here. You have to think about the fact that these fish are still in that pre-spawn staging mode that you gotta have a three-quarter or one-ounce willow leaf spinner bait, something that you can slow roll out there on the edge of the grass, down the middle of the drains to catch those staging fish. Another bait that's gonna play there is gonna be a suspending jerk bait, something that you can get down really slow down and fish slow if the water temperature is cold. A half or a three quarter ounce rattling bait. You saw me catch a, my best fish today on this five eighths ounce Roku shad. That's gonna be a key bait as well. But if the water for, for any reason, you know, warms up like it should in March, I mean, this, this water temperature ought to be pushing up into the 60s the way I look at it, then you've gotta look at things a little bit differently. A Carolina rig is gonna be a mainstay, whether you're fishing out or you're fishing up shallow in the drains, on the points, things like that. Another bait that's gonna play is gonna be a smaller, a, a half ounce or a quarter ounce rattling bait. Something that you can fish up shallower with these fish pushing up shallow. One of the other keys you got to think about is if the lake would happen to get up and warm up, there's a couple of things that are going to come into play. Number one, you might be flipping a tube up into shallow bushes, the willow trees, or even up into the pine trees. If for some reason the fish are spawning, you better have some white tubes to sight fish with. And if the water's got color, probably one of the biggest things that people have forgot about is the floating worm. Five or six years ago when we were here, Takahiro Omori won one of the events on a, on a floating worm, and this could be a major, major player come March on Sam Rayburn for the Texas Team Trail. You know, one of the things about Sam Rayburn is, um, I mean, as you can see, I mean, this lake is at the lowest state it's been at in years, and, uh, you know, this is going to play a huge factor this year for this first event in March. Uh, Probably the biggest thing that everybody's hoping is that this thing comes back up. But one thing about it, if the lake stays low like it is, all it's going to do is compress all the fish into a lot tighter, smaller areas, and they're really going to catch them. But if for some reason the lake does come up, I mean, there's so many things that you've got to take into consideration on Rayburn. One of the biggest things is, I mean, these fish follow drains. They follow these old little creek channels. And if this lake does get up and gets up in that buck brush, you can bet there's gonna be some big spawners caught up in that kind of stuff. Good little drain that swings right up against that point right there. Goes from about 11 foot to five foot in no time. And that's where these fish ought to be right now. I mean, you know, here this time of the year in the beginning of winter, I mean, this water's cooled way off and these fish have been up in this shallow stuff and they should be pulling back out on these points and the, the lips of these little drains. Should be really bunching up too. First by land and now by sea, Lucas Oil has long been a staple for high performance racing vehicles. Now Lucas Oil offers a full line of marine products specially designed for today's outboard engines and proven under the most extreme conditions. Look them up online at lucasoil.com. We'll be right back with more Fishing Texas. Coming in 2012, the Texas Team Trail, a brand new tournament series for weekend anglers. The best venues, the best payout, period. Plus more contingency prize options than you can shake a stick at. Visit TexasTeamTrail.com for all the details and don't miss out on the new standard in tournament bass fishing, the Texas Team Trail. Are you looking for the most up-to-date information on where to fish and what's going on when it comes to fishing in the Lone Star State? Visit TexasFishingForum.com for the latest news and tips on what's going on all over the state of Texas. TexasFishingForum.com Introducing the most advanced, efficient predator on the water today, Triton's new XS series. 
Stalk your prey with hot new features like a solid state fuseless dash with push button start and support for 10 inch depth finders and new bow control with support for 8 inch depth finders. Prowl the deep with our most advanced drivability, maximum comfort, and an incredible hole shot. The new XS by Triton. Are you looking for the most up-to-date information you can find on where to hunt in the Lone Star State? Then you need to visit TexasHuntingForum.com, where you'll find others sharing their passion for hunting in Texas. TexasHuntingForum.com. If you want to activate the bass, you better have a hydrowave. You've got six different bait fish sounds, you run it at any volume, you can see them actually come up to the speaker of the hydrowave. You can watch them come up off the bottom. When you're fishing deep, the hardest one to catch is always the first one. With the hydrowave, you get them going faster. Hydrowave, I won't fish without it. Fishing Texas is brought to you in part by Triton Boats. We take America fishing. Evan Rood, spend more time on the water. And by Lucas Synthetic Outboard Engine Oil. It works. Welcome back to Fishing Texas and our preview of the 2012 Texas Team Trail. We've spent the morning with Mike McClelland on Sam Rayburn Reservoir, stop number one on this brand new tournament series. You know, the Texas Team Trail has an awesome schedule this year. Starting out on legendary fishery Sam Rayburn Reservoir, gonna be a great tournament. And then going April to Ray Roberts, unbelievable place, shallow grass, North Texas. I think that ought to be super also. Livingston, the next stop, it's a little bit of a, of a thinking man's lake. You, you can't catch all your fish in one spot. You gotta be able to move around, but it's got big fish. It's gonna be a great tournament also. And then end up on Louisville, a lake that's put out a lot of fish really close to the Metroplex. Super schedule. I really look forward to seeing the results. Now let's take a look at the rest of the season. Stop number two of the Texas team trail is Lake Ray Roberts, one of the many great fisheries within the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Ray Roberts is a pretty unique North Texas lake. It's got a lot of diversity to it. It's got some great creek arms. It's got some shallow spawning pockets. It's got some marinas. So basically what that means is there's going to be a lot of ways for the anglers that are competing in that event of the Texas Team Tournament Trail to be able to go fish to their styles. But personally, I'd be beating the bank because I think that's going to play a big key in winning that event. You know, Ray Roberts in mid-April is going to be a slugfest. It's going to be a great tournament. It, you know, it fishes a little bit differently than all of the other North Texas lakes that I know about just because it's got some grass in it. And in shallow grass, the fish ought to be on the bank. They ought to be spawning um, or somewhere close to around the spawn. It ought to be a great tournament, big weights. I love it to be a fun tournament. But one thing the guys got to keep in mind, are there still some fish ready to move up? If it's a cold winter, that's going to mean there's still some out deep in a pre-spawn situation. Located farther downstream on the Trinity River north of Houston is Lake Livingston, an old school Texas lake with plenty of big bass. Well, Lake Livingston's a lowland reservoir. It's, it's one of those lakes that's kind of a kind of a junky looking lake. It's got a lot of timber in it, but it, it's got a lot of different places you can actually get or try to get to that you can get away from people on. Little sloughs and little creek channels and uh, kind of kind of areas where you have to kind of jump over a little sandbar, kind of get back in a little, you know, a little small cove. And, and so that may play into it. Um, that's the time of year the shad are spawning. It kind of depends on what kind of cover there is. If there's a lot of cover in the water, if the water's risen a little bit, then there might be some shallow green vegetation in those in the back. The shad, if they're spawning in that shallow vegetation, then that's where the bass will be. It's going to be shallow. That's one thing for sure. What a great old lake in the state of Texas. Now it goes through a lot of cycles and it's currently in an upward swing. A lot of fish are being caught there and the lake's not receiving a lot of pressure. One of the biggest events of the year will be the Texas Team Tournament Trail event there. The time of the year that they're gonna be there, I expect there's still gonna be some fish shallow, but there's also gonna be some fish in that post spawn bite. They're gonna actively be moving out a little deeper and chasing baits. That's gonna be a great event. It's gonna be interesting to see what style, what technique. I'm not gonna be surprised to see it be a junk fishing tournament catching fish on four or five different baits. What a great event. And the last stop of the season takes us back north to the Metroplex on June 9th at Lake Louisville. This is your last chance to qualify for the two-day championship this fall on Lake Amistad. You know, Louisville is traditionally known as, as a lake that May and June fish are caught around boat docks. 
This may easily be a, a lake that's actually one out deep on the ledges, uh, a little rock pile, a little drop off, something, you know, not really, really deep, but, you know, 10 to 18 feet deep, some place that you can, you know, where they'll stack up. First place they stack up a lot of times is the easiest place to catch them. It's a surprisingly great fishery. Weights will surprise you there at times, and that's the time of the year that they can because the fish will actively be feeding on shad that are spawning typically. That means the fish are going to be a little bit easier to catch than other times of the year. The all-new Texas Team Trail presented by Cabela's launches in 2012 with four qualifying events and a two-day championship at Lake Amistad in October. With payouts to 50th place and a brand new boat for first at each event, the Texas Tournament Trail also offers a variety of contingency prizes. Qualified Stratos owners are eligible for extra cash incentives and a first place upgrade to the Stratos 202 Elite. Yeah, the TTT is set up with an awesome payout. It, it's got great contingencies. Um, if you're running a Ranger, Triton, Stratus, you've got great contingencies built in all through the field. Um, you got a chance to win a boat for first place, but pay way down all the way to 50th place. And so, you know, I, I can't see a payout. I mean, the payout to me is just unparalleled. Bass fishing has evolved, and the Texas Team Trail, along with Fishing Texas, is proud to showcase equipment used by tournament professionals, like the all-new Stratus 189 VLO, powered by a Mercury Pro XS. Now coming up, we'll rejoin Mike McClellan and take a closer look at this all-new tournament-ready boat. Here's another look at the schedule for the brand new Texas Team Trail. Visit TexasTeamTrail.com for registration and tournament details. We'll be right back with more from Fishing Texas. Son, I think it's about time. Time for what, Pop? I'm getting the age I want to slow down. I hear you. I know it's going to be tough to fill my shoes, but you're going to have the best tools. I won't let you down, Dad. It's time for you to get to work. I'm headed to the lake. Don't get grass in the flower beds. <laughs> Buy a new Xmark riding mower and get a $200 gift card from Cabela's. Visit XMarkOutdoors.com for complete details. Attention oxygen therapy users for this important message. I lost my freedom the day I went on oxygen. Those tanks, they kept me from really enjoying my life. Hi, I'm Mary, an oxygen expert here at Inogen. If you require supplemental oxygen, we can help you regain your freedom and independence. Meet the new Inogen One. It's a lightweight and easy to use portable oxygen concentrator that makes its own oxygen. It works just like your in-home concentrator, but it's much smaller and lighter. Take your independence back and do the things you love without worrying about running out of oxygen. The Inogen One is even approved for air travel. I first got this Inogen One, I thought, this is a this is a godsend. This is a real real piece of art. Call now and we'll send you this free information kit. If you have Medicare or other insurance, you may be eligible to reclaim your freedom with the Inogen One at little or no additional cost. Call 1-888-569-1790 for your free no obligation information kit. Call 1-888-569-1790 today. Some people wait for the fish to bite, and some people go get them with a Mercury Optimax Pro XS. The time-tested, tournament-proven choice of champions and weekend warriors alike. Pair it with an innovative Fury propeller and the precise control of a motor guide trolling motor, and you'll have the ultimate fishing rig. See how Mercury gets you first to the fish at mercurymarine.com slash performance. Mercury Marine, number one on the water. Before you head out here, get ready at Cabela's. Your source for the hottest new gear at tough to beat prices. Save big on everything you need when you shop by catalog, stores, and online at Cabela's.com. Our legendary selection is field tested and field proven. You can trust our gear. Cabela's, world's foremost outfitter. Fishing Texas is brought to you in part by Stratus Boats and by Mercury, number one on the water. Welcome back to the show. Let's get back to East Texas with the lead bass pro, Mike McClellan. Today I'm down here at Lake Sam Rayburn doing a preview show for the new Texas Team Trail presented by Cabela's. And I've had the opportunity to spend the day in this new Stratus Velo 189, and man, what a boat. 
had an opportunity to run all up and down Lake Sam Rayburn and, and look at all the uh, features that it's got. But doing so, I really got to see what this boat's all about. It's an 18 and a half foot boat rated for a 150, and my choice is a Mercury Pro XS. Awesome motor, no matter where you go. When you start looking at the guts of this boat, I mean, this thing's got everything you and your partner need to fish serious team tournaments in. Rear deck is plenty big. You've got a huge storage area for your batteries, your charger, all of that stuff. Tackle storage on passenger side and driver's side. Huge live wells to hold those 30 pound bags of fish you're gonna catch. When you move on up to the cockpit area, I mean, that's where you can really start seeing the redesign, the re-engineering that went into this boat. It's got a rugged interior finish. It's got textured finish. You've got snap-in carpet with rubber floor mats, so when you need to clean the boat, it's gonna be easy to do. Newly designed seats. I mean, everything about this cockpit area is redesigned. When you move on forward to the console, I mean, the console is completely redesigned. You've got a large area for your big electronics units. You've got a dash panel that's got inset switches, so you don't have to worry about turning those switches on and off during the course of the day. When you move on forward, if you take a look at the way the console is offset off the gunnel of the boat, you've got an area for your seven and a half and eight foot rods to lay without worrying about them banging on the console. So that's a real cool feature. Moving on forward, taking a look at the cockpit from up here, you can see you've got a pop-up windshield for your co-angler, your, your partner, whatever you're talking about. You've got your uh, angler workstation, you've got your measuring board right there at your fingertips, you've got access over here to put pliers and scissors. When you step up on the front deck of this boat, I mean, that's where this thing's really laid out nice. You've got your cooler right here, so you've got easy access when you're loading your boat. You've got a dry storage right here to put rain gear, tackle items, things like that, things you want to keep dry. The center storage box, in my opinion, is one of the most well laid out center storage boxes in any 18 foot boat I've seen. You've got a day box on top to use your rods that you're going to have during the course of the day right there at easy access, but then your tackle organizer is just below that. You've got a seven and a half foot rod box on the passenger side so you can keep any rod that you need to keep in the boat. When you move on forward, the bow area has always been kind of an issue. I don't care what size boat you're used to fishing out of, your electronics have always been right here in the middle under the trolling motor cable. But as you can see, they pulled everything over to the side, moved the electronics over here so you've got good clear access and vision of them all day. The way I look at it, this new Stratus Velo is one awesome boat. Go to your local Stratus dealer and take a look at the new Velo 189. Visit Stratus Boats and get your heart racing over the Stratus 189 VLO. Stratus rewards angler loyalty with the Stratus two times tournament incentive program. Check out their site for details. And finally, don't miss out on the inaugural season of the Texas Team Trail. With contingency awards through Ranger, Triton, Stratos, Mercury, and Evinrude, the Texas Team Trail is setting the new standard in tournament fishing. Register online at texasteamtrail.com. Well, this Texas Team Trail is exactly what Texas has needed for a long time in tournament bass fishing. You get to fish with a buddy, go to lakes that are really, really good, and win a lot of money. Pay all the way down to 50th place. We've needed this in Texas for a while. It's going to be awesome. The Texas Team Trail is gearing up for 2012. Visit TexasTeamTrail.com for the schedule and registration details. Fishing Texas is a CareCo TV LLC production. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.